Hi friends, this is a short video um, related to the nerve, neuron and nerve fibers, the classification of neurons, nerves and nerve fibers. I have often seen that the students make uh, confusion in these terms. So let us understand uh, these terms and how we classify uh, the nerve fibers or neurons or the nerves. Now, first thing is that uh, basic structural and functional unit of the nervous system is a neuron. And uh, if you see the neuron, its structure is something like this commonly. There is a nerve cell body and its extensions. The short extensions all around are called as dendrites and there is one long extension on one end which is called as the axon. This is a typical neuron and the basic uh, structural and functional unit of uh, the nervous system. Now, how does a neuron conduct impulses? You know, the only job that the neuron has is to conduct the signals, conduct the, uh, conduct the impulses or action potentials. So, how these impulses are conducted from uh, one neuron to the next is that a neuron has all these dendrites. The dendri dendrites are the receptor zones. These dendrites, they receive the impulse from the previous neuron. You know, uh, impulses are transmitted from one neuron to the next or in some, uh, uh, or it may be to the muscle or to a gland or to a blood vessel. But uh, here we are specifically talking about the neuron and how neurons conduct impulses from one to the next. Uh, you know, dendrites are the receptor zones, means one neuron, its uh, axon will end on the dendrite of the next neuron. So, this is neuron number 1, its axon is ending on the dendrite of the neuron number 2, next neuron. From there, the impulse is transmitted electrotonically through the dendritic spine, through the nerve cell body and then finally, it reaches this axon and then the impulse will be transmitted down this axon away from the nerve cell body towards the axon terminal. This is how the impulses are transmitted. What I am trying to say is, this uh, is how impulses are carried by the neurons and therefore, uh, axons, a single axon is the nerve fiber, it conducts the impulse. And uh, a nerve, when you say nerve, nerve means a nerve trunk which contains many such axons, many such nerve fibers within a nerve, nerve trunk. So, neuron, nerve, nerve fibers, these terms should be understood very clearly. Uh, that is how the neurons work and, and one more just additional point is the collection of nerve cell bodies and the relay station in the periphery is called as a ganglion and in the CNS it is called as a nucleus. So, nucleus in the brain would mean collection of these nerve cells, nerve cell bodies collected at one place. That is a neuron. Now, with that, let us classify the neurons, the nerves and the nerve fibers. Remember, a nerve, we are talking about a nerve trunk. It will consist of nerve fibers, which are the axons. Each axon is a nerve fiber. Let us start with the classification of neurons. We have already seen uh, a typical uh, neuron, its structure that there are dendrites all round and one axon on one end which is the nerve fiber. 
So, uh, and before I start this, let me say uh, just uh, an important uh, quick uh, information is that neuron is a terminally differentiated tissue, which means no new neurons are formed after birth. Neurons do not uh, multiply and they do not increase in number after birth. So, what increases is the number of synapses. Our brain is growing throughout our life. That is because of increase in the number of synapses and not in the increase in the number of neurons. Well, only one exception to this is the olfactory neuron. Olfactory neuron continues to divide throughout life. Right. Uh, now, let us classify neurons. First, the first type of neuron is multipolar neuron. Multipolar neuron means that it is like this, this structure and there are dendrites all around. So, this neuron can impulse, uh, can receive the impulse from on all its dendrites like this and it then those impulses will be transmitted down its axon. In this manner, impulse received on various dendrites and then they are transmitted down its nerve fiber. That is a multipolar neuron. Majority of the neurons in the cerebral cortex, in the cerebellum and in the CNS in general, majority of the neurons are like this, multipolar neurons. Second, some neurons are bipolar neurons. So, bipolar neuron means, as we have said, majority are like this, that there are dendrites all around. But in some cases, what happens is, all these dendritic extensions, they will fuse on the other end. So, only two poles, these dendritic extensions fused. So, this pole on one end and axon on the other end, that is a bipolar neuron. Uh, Examples are olfactory neuron is a bipolar neuron, even our retina has bipolar neuron. So, some examples of bipolar neurons. Now, one uh, category of bipolar neuron or one subtype is pseudo unipolar neuron, pseudo unipolar neuron. What is the meaning of pseudo unipolar? It means it is a, a bipolar neuron, but it appears like unipolar means a single pole uh, appears for certain distance. So, it is called as a pseudo unipolar neuron. Mind you, uh, in reality, it is a bipolar neuron to begin with. How it happens is something like this. Suppose this is a nerve cell body. And at the start, in the beginning, this will be a bipolar neuron. Then these two poles, they travel a certain distance and they fuse to make, to, to make it appear as a single pole. But then the poles will or the two branches will again separate. One branch goes to the skin and the other one will go into the spinal cord, into the CNS. This will ascend into the CNS towards the cortex. So, this is a pseudo unipolar neuron because it appears like a single pole. Now, what is the example? The dorsal root ganglion, the nerve cell in the DRG, dorsal root ganglion you know, the nerves coming from the periphery when they are entering the spinal cord through the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Before that, they have this dorsal root ganglion and I have already mentioned ganglion is where the nerve cell bodies are located. So, this nerve cell in the DRG 
is an example of pseudo unipolar neuron. And the third type is an axonal neuron, an axonal neuron, which means what? Which means there is no axon for that particular neuron, there is no axon. Now, uh, why would there such a neuron be in the body? You see, axon is meant to carry the impulse over a long distance. What is the function of an axon? What is the function of a nerve fiber? That it conducts the impulse over a long distance. It covers a distance. An axonal neuron means distance need not be covered. There is no distance over which the impulse has to be sent by that particular nerve cell. So, it does not have axon, it does not have nerve fiber. What is the example? Uh, there is an amacrine cell in the retina. Amacrine cell in the retina has uh, uh, no nerve fiber, has no axon. So, it is an anaxonal neuron. Also, uh, post ganglionic parasympathetic neuron, post ganglionic parasympathetic neuron is an anaxonal neuron. Let me just explain why this is ax uh, anaxonal. It does not have axon, it does not have nerve fiber because consider this parasympathetic nerves, they arise from the sacral segments of the spinal cord. This is a preganglionic nerve, then there is a ganglion which is a relay station and then remember ganglion in the case of parasympathetic nerve, it is located near the organ or sometimes in the wall of the organ. That means preganglionic nerve is long, it reaches all the way to the organ, then there is a ganglion just outside the organ. And then the postganglionic nerve will be very, very short. The next nerve that carries the impulse will be very short because its organ is just located there. So, due to this, the postganglionic parasympathetic nerve, see this is preganglionic, which is a, a long nerve fiber, but then there is a ganglion just outside the organ, and this is postganglionic nerve. Uh, which is which does not have to carry the impulse to a certain to a long distance and therefore it does not have a nerve fiber it does not have an axon it is an anaxonal neuron so remember postganglionic parasympathetic neuron does not have a nerve fiber it does not have an axon it is an axonal type of neuron the reason as i said it does not have to cover a distance it's just very close to the organ. Right, so that uh, was the classification of neurons. Now, based on the axon uh, and its diameter, let us see the classification of nerve fibers. Classification of nerve fibers. that is classification based on the axonal diameter and therefore, the conduction velocity. Basically, there are three types of nerve fibers. This classification is called as Erlanger and Gasser classification of the nerve fibers based on the axonal diameter and therefore, the conduction velocity. Uh, remember, conduction velocity is directly proportional to the diameter of the axon, diameter of the nerve fiber. So, based on this, there are three types of uh, nerve fibers A, B and C. A and B are myelinated, whereas C is non-myelinated. So, that is uh, that needs to be understood. A and B 
are myelinated nerve fibers, C type is non myelinated. Uh, in the case of myelinated neurons, myelinated nerve fibers, the conduction velocity is roughly six times the diameter. I mean, uh, A, let us just first uh, complete this classification. A has following subtypes A alpha, A beta, A gamma, A delta, and then we have B and C. So, in all, there are six types of nerve fibers A alpha, A beta, A gamma, A delta, B, and C. This is descending order of their thickness or diameter and therefore conduction velocity. So, A alpha is the thickest axon or thickest nerve fiber and therefore fastest conducting nerve fiber whereas C fiber is the thinnest one, least diameter, axonal diameter is the smallest and therefore slowest conduction velocity. Uh, what I was just mentioning before this is that in the case of myelinated nerve fibers, conduction velocity is 6 times the diameter. I mean, already I have mentioned it that velocity is proportional to the diameter. Greater the diameter, uh, greater will be the conduction velocity. But what is exactly that proportion? Is that in the case of myelinated nerve fibers, conduction velocity is proportional to or rather it is 6 times the diameter. Now, what I am trying to say here is, let us say for example, uh, A alpha, the A alpha nerve fiber is uh, 20 microns in diameter, the axonal diameter is 20 microns and the conduction velocity is roughly 120 meters per second. So, that is what I meant by 6 times. We just have to take uh, the number, do not take the units there. So, that is about the myelinated nerve fiber or myelinated axon. In the case of unmyelinated uh, axon, the conduction velocity is proportional to square root of the diameter. So, in the case of C fiber type, the velocity is proportional to square root of the diameter. That was about the uh, myelination and uh, then the conduction velocity, how proportional is it. Let me make one more point here and that is, which one is a greater influencing factor on the conduction velocity? Is it myelination or it is the axonal diameter? Look, axonal diameter is an influencing factor on the conduction velocity. You know, after all, what is an impulse? It occurs because of the flow of ions. I mean, sodium comes in and the nerve fiber excites, that is depolarization. And then it will travel and it will excite the next point, next point, sodium will come in from the next point, it will go to the third point and it goes on. Now, diameter will influence this conduction velocity, uh, transmission of impulse. Why? Because you see inside the axon, there is axoplasm and this axoplasm, the cytoplasm, it will offer resistance for the flow of these charges. And so, uh, greater the diameter, lesser would be the resistance for the flow of ions. That is quite obvious. Uh, you can understand the physics behind it very uh, easily. If the diameter is more for the nerve fiber, then the flow of ions can be uh, that much easier and therefore, conduction velocity can be faster. So, diameter influences the conduction velocity, but even greater um, factor for the conduction velocity is myelination. You know, in the case of myelination, the conduction occurs by saltatory conduction. I mean, it is called as saltatory conduction rather. Means, the depolarization occurs at the nodes of Ranvier. So, this is the first node of Ranvier, sodium comes in, uh, 
and it travels electrotonically up to the next node of Ranvier. So this is a very quick transfer of charges or quick flow of charges and then the next node of Ranvier will develop the action potential, it will depolarize. What I am trying to say is only few nodes will generate the action potentials and rest is direct flow of charges from one node to the next and therefore uh, myelination increases the velocity uh, even in a greater sense. So two factors that influence the velocity, one is uh, diameter of the axon and the other one whether it is myelinated or not. Uh, look in the case of unmyelinated nerve fiber, every next point will have to develop action potential. Whereas in the case of, my, uh, this is in the case of unmyelinated nerve. So every next point generating action potential and that is how the impulse is getting transmitted through the nerve will take a longer time to travel the whole distance. Whereas this myelination, only nodes of Ranvier are depolarizing and rest is direct spread of charges. This will be much faster. And finally, I would say, finally in this context, I would like to say that which one is a greater influencing factor, myelination or conduction velocity, uh, myelination or uh, diameter, I beg your pardon. Uh, I mean, compare the two neurons, one with a bigger diameter, but non-myelinated, the other one, which is, which is having a smaller diameter of the axon, but myelinated, which one will be faster? Of course, myelinated uh, axon will conduct the impulse faster, even if it has got a small diameter. Uh, bigger diameter but non-myelinated, I am just uh, giving you a hypothetical situation to make you understand how myelination is a greater influencing factor on conduction velocity. Now having said all this, let us just see the Erlanger and Gasser classification of these nerve fibers uh, and what do they carry, where are they located in the body, what do they carry, uh, A alpha type of nerve fiber it carries proprioception and alpha motor neuron. I mean the motor neuron that starts uh, from the spinal cord and goes to the muscle causing the muscle to contract. That alpha motor neuron is uh, A alpha type of nerve fiber and proprioception, joint position sense the impulses detected from the muscle by the receptors in the muscle and about the position of the muscle or position of the joint. Muscle length and it is sent to the cerebellum and to the higher centers. That is also A alpha type of fiber, fastest conducting fiber. A beta nerve fiber in the body carries touch and pressure. A gamma, it is a gamma motor neuron that goes to the muscle spindle. Now gamma motor neuron does not cause the muscle to contract. This is a motor neuron that starts from the spinal cord and goes to the muscle, but it is not causing the muscle to contract. It is not meant for that. This gamma motor neuron is there to maintain the excitability of the muscle spindle, proprioceptor in the muscle. A delta uh, carries fast pain and temperature. So these are A fiber types. Uh, B fiber type, preganglionic autonomic type. Preganglionic autonomic means sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve fibers which arise from the spinal cord and they reach the ganglion and uh, synapse there in the ganglion and from where the postganglionic nerve fiber will arise and go to the organs. So preganglionic nerve fiber starting from the spinal cord and going to the ganglion, the relay station, uh, they are B fiber types. And C fiber types, so remember preganglionic autonomic means sympathetic as well as parasympathetic fibers. And C fiber type, uh, somatic fibers, they carry slow pain 
So remember, A delta fiber carries fast pain, acute pain, sharp pain, and C fiber carries slow pain or chronic dull type of pain. Uh, and uh, also, autonomic fibers are uh, post ganglionic sympathetic, post ganglionic sympathetic. Now, did you note one point here? For the B fiber, I said preganglionic autonomic. Autonomic means I said sympathetic as well as parasympathetic. But for C fiber, I have mentioned only postganglionic sympathetic. We are not saying postganglionic sympathetic and parasympathetic or, or both auto, uh, branches of autonomic. Why? We have already answered this question some time back. That postganglionic parasympathetic does not have a nerve fiber, it does not have an axon, it is an axonal type of nerve fiber. So, postganglionic parasympathetic uh, nerve cell does not have a nerve fiber, it does not have an axon, we, are, we don't have to mention it here, it doesn't have nerve fiber. Only postganglionic sympathetic have uh, nerve fibers and they are of C type. Uh, let me just add here, there is also the numerical classification of nerve fibers. Sometimes we use this numerical classification. Uh, what is done in the case of numerical classification is, we will take out only the sensory fibers from this classification and we uh, put them in numerical classification. So, we have only sensory fibers, see this is a mix of sensory and motor, but we select out sensory fibers and again classify them and we would call it a numerical classification. So, it will have only sensory fibers. Uh, it has, uh, I mean they are called as type 1A, 1B, 2, 3 and 4 type 1A, type 1B, then 2, 3 and 4. That is a numerical classification of nerve fibers and to be precise sensory nerve fibers. So, type 1A also called as primary afferents, it uh, carries proprioception, but carries proprioception means it emerges from where? It emerges from the muscle spindle. You know there is a receptor in the muscle near the belly of the muscle called as muscle spindle. It detects the length of the muscle and sends it to the CNS. So, one A fiber or primary afferent it is called, it carries this. One B, one B is also carrying proprioception and it detects the muscle tension, tension in the muscle. So, one B fiber arises from Golgi tendon organ. Remember, muscle in its belly has muscle spindle near the central region and in the tendon of the muscle, there is another proprioceptor which is called as Golgi tendon organ. This detects the tension in the muscle. Remember, muscle spindle detects the length of the muscle, Golgi tendon organ detects the tension in the muscle and it, send it sends that uh, to the CNS. So, uh, Nerve fiber is one B type which arises from the Golgi tendon organ. Then type 2, again proprioception uh, which is detected by the muscle spindle. So, type 2 fiber also starts from the muscle spindle. Uh, type 2 also includes touch, some fibers carrying touch sensation. So, some of the a beta type of fibers will be included in the type 2 in the numerical classification. So, uh, A beta fibers, we are uh, calling it, they carry the touch and pressure. So, we will put them as type 2, they are put in the type 2. Type 3 are equivalent to the A delta fibers. So, pain and cold or pain and temperature. And 
uh, th that is type 3, type 4 will be C fiber types. The somatic fiber types C, we have already said that they carry slow pain and they will be put into the category of type 4. So, that is the numerical classification uh, which is parallel to the Erlanger and Gasser classification from which we remove the, uh, uh, from which we take out the sensory fibers, make the numerical classification. This is the classification of nerve fibers, axons, single nerve fibers. And finally, let us see the classification of nerves. Look, when I say classification of nerves, I mean a nerve trunk, a brachial nerve, a sciatic nerve, these are the nerves, these are, they are nerve trunks and they uh, contain the nerve fibers, the axons, a number of axons. So, you know, this is a nerve, entire nerve, it will have those nerve fibers or axons. We saw the classification of axons just now or nerve fibers. Now, the nerves. There are various ways of classifying the nerves. So, let us see those various ways uh, of classifying the nerves. One is based on the origin. The nerves are of two types. Cranial nerves and spinal nerves. So, there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves, 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Second way of classifying the nerves uh, is based on what function does it perform, based on the function. The nerve can be classified as either the sensory nerve, so it will carry the sensory impulses, motor nerve or even mixed nerve. So, uh, there are many mixed nerves which carry the sensory nerve fibers from periphery to the center and they also have motor nerve fibers, motor axons, they will carry motor impulses to the periphery, to the muscle. So, that is another way of classifying the nerves based on what function do they perform. Another way of looking at the nerves is uh, again based on the function Somatic nerves versus autonomic nerves. Uh, somatic nerves are the ones which uh, perform the conscious function. So, signals reaching the consciousness or signals starting from the conscious uh, or from the cortex, they will be the somatic nerves. Whereas, autonomic nerves they will perform involuntary function, they will uh, regulate or control the involuntary function. So, autonomic nerves. Autonomic nervous system will have these autonomic nerves. That is one more way of looking at the nerves. Now, autonomic nerves are, they uh, are, or autonomic nervous system has sympathetic system and parasympathetic system sympathetic and parasympathetic and in both cases we have preganglionic nerves and postganglionic nerves we have already discussed this part that in the case of sympathetic nerves they arise from thoracic and lumbar segments of the spinal cord the nerve comes out the preganglionic nerve comes out and just outside the gang outside the spinal cord there is ganglion the relay station so the preganglionic nerve will end it will it is a short nerve and then post ganglionic nerve will start from there and it will go to the organ. It will be a long nerve. So, preganglionic nerve and post ganglionic nerve. Uh, the, this has single nerve fibers, so we can call it axon as well. And in the case of parasympathetic, we already said this that the nerve arises from the spinal cord and goes all the way to the organ. The preganglionic nerve is long and there is a ganglion near the organ and the post ganglionic, ganglionic nerve will be short, it will not have any axon. That is the difference between a sympathetic nerve 
and a parasympathetic nerve. So, that is one more way of classifying the nerves, somatic versus autonomic. Uh, nerves and nerve fibers can also be classified based on the neurotransmitter. This is true for the nerves, this is true for the nerve fibers. Based on the neurotransmitter that they release, the nerves and the nerve fibers actually are classified as adrenergic nerves or adrenergic nerve fibers, cholinergic nerve fibers or cholinergic nerves, uh, dopaminergic nerves. So, dopamine will be the neurotransmitter, uh, serotonergic nerves and so on and so forth. So, that is one more way of classifying the nerves based on what is the neurotransmitter released by the nerve fibers inside that nerve. That is in short the classification of nerves. So, we have seen uh, very often I ask this question in the viva, I ask classification of nerves the students end up answering nerve fibers. I ask nerve fibers, they end up talking about neurons. So, that is how you classify neurons, then the nerve fibers which are axons and in general the nerves.